Hello, Riley and Eureka friends. This is Mrs. Parsons, and I'm back with Lesson 4 in our online art studio. Today, we are going to be talking about architecture. An architect is an artist who uses line, shape, color, pattern, texture, and all of the things that we learn about in our art studio to design and create buildings. Buildings that we live in, buildings that we work in, and buildings that we play in. Some architects will even look at that building as if it were a sculpture. They'll pay attention to the area surrounding it, the city surrounding it, the landscape surrounding it, and they'll make creative decisions based on that. And those buildings can almost look like a sculpture or a piece of 3D art. One architect that does that is named Zaha Hadid. You might be familiar with one of her pieces of work. If you've ever been to MSU or driven down Grand River through East Lansing and through campus, you might have seen the big silver building that looks almost like a spaceship. That is the Broad Art Museum. And the Broad Art Museum was designed by Zaha Hadid. She liked to look things at things in nature and then design her buildings around that. So we're going to read a story about her and then I'm going to give you your lesson for today. This book is called The World is Not a Rectangle, a portrait of architect Zaha Hadid. It was written and illustrated by Jeanette Winter. The World is Not a Rectangle. In Iraq, rivers flow through green marshes. Wind swoops across sand dunes through ancient cities. Zaha Hadid sees the rivers and marshes and dunes and ruins with her father and imagines what cities looked like thousands of years ago. In Baghdad, where Zaha lives with her family, she dreams of designing her own cities. Zaha looks long and hard at patterns in her Persian carpet and sees how the shapes and colors flow into each other, like the dunes and rivers and marshes. Zaha has ideas. She designs clothes for herself. She arranges her furniture. She loves her mirror because the corners aren't square. There are no corners in the dunes or rivers or marshes. Zaha is a Muslim who attends a Catholic school and loves math and still thinks about the ancient ruins. She leaves home to learn more about cities and how to build them. She has ideas. In London, Zaha studies to be an architect. She fills notebooks with plans and designs. She makes paintings of the city she sees in her mind. Zaha graduates with honors, rents a room in an old school building, and opens her own office, Studio 9. A few friends join her. They all work hard, night and day, making drawings and plans. We never slept. Zaha's designs don't look like other designs. Her buildings swish and zoom and flow and fly. The world is not a rectangle. No one wants to build her unusual designs. They say they can't be built, but Zaha knows they can. So she enters a competition after competition hoping to win, hoping someone will be brave enough to build them. Finally, one of Zaha's designs is chosen. The architect judges think her plan is best. But the city committee doesn't like it and won't build it. They hold another competition. Her designs wins again, and still they refuse. Hadid means iron in Arabic and Zaha is strong as iron. She keeps on working, one plan after another. I made a conscious decision to not stop. Zaha remembers the grasses in the marshes swaying and sees tall buildings 
dancing like grass. Zaha remembers the wind in the dunes and feels it blowing over and around and through her desert building. Zaha looks at shells and cradles her stadium like a cocoon. Zaha looks at stones in the stream and builds an opera house like the pebbles in the water. Inside the opera house, a singer is the pearl in the oyster shell. Zaha looks up at stars and galaxies and sees swirling buildings. Zaha looks at the Alps and builds a museum inside a mountain peak with windows to see the skies and valleys. Zaha thinks of the jungle in ancient wood temples and builds a wooden building to remember a faraway war. One by one, Zaha's designs become buildings all over the world. We do this so you can be in a simple place and feel good. Zaha is so busy now that every room in the old school building is filled. Over 400 architects work in these rooms, designing, planning, engineering, and making models of Zaha's visions. You should do what you like. Zaha designs a dollhouse and shoes and chairs. She designs a stalactite sculpture and an iceberg seat. I can't stop thinking. Sometimes when she is working, Zaha's early memories return. The beauty of the landscape where sand, water, reeds, birds, buildings, and people all somehow flow together has never left me. I still believe in the impossible. Then one night, the light in Zaha's window goes dark. She has left this world. But her architects keep their lights on, designing, planning, engineering, and making models of her visions, keeping her flame blazing light. Even though Zaha is gone. And all of those buildings that they talked about in this book are all buildings that she built all over the world, including the one on MSU's campus. Another architect who used nature as inspiration for his buildings was someone named Frank Lloyd Wright. I've included a couple links below um, this video for you to check out. One is a little video about Zaha Hadid and some of her buildings and her life. And another is a tour of Frank Lloyd Wright's house, Falling Water which is a really cool house that has a waterfall going through it. He built the house into a hill as part of nature with the waterfall flowing through the house. So you might want to check that out for ideas too. I also included my drawing, which I'm going to talk about in a minute, and some pictures of Broad Art Museum and of Falling Water by Frank Lloyd Wright. What I would like you to do today is design a building or a house or a dream house of your very own. But I want you to think outside the box. I want you to think like Zaha Hadid and look at things in nature. Know that it doesn't have to be a square with a triangle on top to be a house. You could have curves. It could have weird angles. It can have different levels. It could have pieces of nature growing up through and around it. And I want you to either design it like a blueprint. You could draw your house. You could draw the outside and the inside so we could see what it would look like on the inside. Or you could build it more 3D using things that you have at home. However you do it, I can't wait to see what you come up with today. Really, really think about what your dream house or dream building would be or dream school even. 
Um, and then make sure you either share those with me on this blog post, email me pictures, or come to my office hours and show me in person what you've done. I cannot wait to see what you do with this project. I know it's going to be amazing. I miss you all very much, and I can't wait to see your art. See you next week. Bye.